It's a good day to talk about loyalty, but then it's always a good day to talk about loyalty, isn't it? <laughs> to start off with, I thought that we would talk about traditional and what doesn't work versus what's changed and what does work with rewards programs. But I also want you, and this was not planned, I know, but I also want you to talk about how the technology stack has to evolve with this. So can we start with you, Sanjeev? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so I think one thing that does not work anymore about a traditional loyalty program is at one point in time, all that the program had was earn and burn, right? Uh, I think gone are the days when you can just run a bare bones earn and burn program and expect, to, expect that a customer will engage with you. Um, what has also changed is the way you engage with a customer. Again, at one point in time, you decided the channel which you wanted to use to engage with a customer. Uh, in fact, Ram and I were discussing this earlier this morning, saying that today you have to be everywhere and let the customer decide where he wants to engage with you. Uh, so these two things I know, at least off the top of my head, that have uh, changed significantly. And what does that mean? Like, how did you have to change to cope with that, for example? Sure. So uh, again, earlier you could just have a rule engine and you could use that to run your program. Uh, today you need, uh, you need the ability to pull in data from multiple sources, uh, which is why CDPs have gotten popular. You need the ability to run campaigns as and when an interaction happens, so trigger-based campaigns. So you need systems that run trigger-based campaigns for you. And then the ability to analyze all the information that's coming in to create those trigger-based campaigns. So there's a whole stack involved behind it that enables this entire functionality. Fair enough. I want to get Vicky in because also, you know, hospitality and loyalty seems very closely traditionally together. Yeah, I think um, loyalty programs today, first of all, just using the word program, I think loyalty has to become part of everybody's role. Um, and it shouldn't be a standalone program run by a standalone department anymore. Um, also, it's moved very much away from the transactional nature as it was before with promises for the future, building up points balances, moving up through tiers. That's, that's kind of a given. People expect that. Now, it's moving much more to the experience, um, demanding much more, especially since COVID, a lot more authenticity from brands um, and flexibility as well. Um, have we changed for that? We've moved from a, a, a legacy loyalty platform that we had before, uh, very much... Uh, accounting based program uh, to, to counter for all those points and all that money at the end of the day. It's moved much more to an agile platform that allows us to deliver in real time the next best experience. Some of the things that we've heard this morning um, allowing us to engage with our customers, deliver nurture campaigns, um, and, then, and then automate a lot of marketing automation in there as well. Okay, interesting. And so Ravid, of course, you've built it from, from scratch. Were there anything traditional about loyalty programs at, you know? Uh, Yolanda, yes and no. Now, there are certain elements of loyalty that, uh, that have come with tradition. I mean, be it the currency, uh, earn and burn, but that's a default. That's a default of it. I mean, that's something that it's not new. It's, uh, it's a currency, and we give back to customers in the form of points. But having said that, there is an evolution that one, uh, that any program has to do, and, and that, that's happened over time. So customers have evolved. Uh, as you said, customers uh, can today choose where and how they want to be uh, connected with. Uh, technology has evolved, and one has to, of course, be in line and in sync with uh, tech development. But having said that, there is a human element to it as well. So you need to kind of, you know, what I would like to say, humanize technology. So human behavior might change, but at the core of it, human beings are still human beings, right? So you need to be very, very cautious of the fact that how, while your technology evolves, you don't uh, lose the human angle uh, of loyalty. And uh, with, re uh, with regards to the Yes Rewards program, I mean, we had a fair set of challenges, of course, you know, as any other program in the market out there today. Uh, but we tried to keep it as simple as we uh, as we can. Uh, we want to get in as many interesting partners that we can get. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of interest, uh, partners from the outside which actually make it exciting for our customers to uh, engage beyond our network. I mean, we're a, we're a fuel retailer and mm. fuel can only be as exciting as 
yeah. <laughs> the industry. We're not a luxury hotel, or we're not a, uh, you know, we're not an Emirates Airlines or any of that. But having said that, we still, we, you need to ensure that you engage with the customer, uh, ease of use, and uh, stay relevant. Hmm. That's interesting because it's not something like you said that you traditionally think about uh, fuel and loyalty as a program together. So. Um, can you break it down for us in terms of what technologies make it to your loyalty stack? Yep, sure. So if you look at the loyalty solution as such, right, it starts with the, you know, if we kind of imagine this like a layered cake, you have the customer engagement layer. That's where your point of sale systems, you know, where customers interact in the store or your e-com systems or your marketing automation systems through which you engage your customers, your service channels, all of that form, you know, where loyalty influenced experiences can be surfaced on those channels. So that's one of the layers in the tech stack. The next one is typically the program administration or, you know, that's where the innovation needs to happen, right? It's not just about setting up a bunch of rules and then <clears throat> keeping the program constant. This is where you're really innovating, coming up with offers, personalization, uh, and, you know, targeting the right segment. So that's, that's where the innovation happens at the program level. And then you have, you need to leverage the in insights and intelligence. So we're really looking at a data that is being consumed to really build that insights and intelligence, you know, to be able to drive that program ROI. For example, when you launch a new promotion, are you sure what is the lift in revenue that you can generate? for the cost that you're incurring for running that campaign, right? So there is that element of data and intelligence. And then below that sits the, you know, the data and the integration layer, right? Which is really consuming this data so that you can really serve up the personalized offers, right? And then of course you have the single source of truths, um, you know, which can build that loyalty profile for the member so that you can leverage that across the touch points. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Tell me something, when you start off, who do you decide to target your, or to promote your loyalty program to? How do you do that? And this is open for anyone, but would you like to take it? So, um, I mean, it depends on the nature of business. I think, um, I, I, I honestly think that the program is actually, at least in our case, the program is open for everybody and we do want to uh, reach out to everybody from the perspective that uh, a first transaction may not tell me what, that, what the potential of that customer is. I still need to engage with him a certain amount of time. Now, that's, that's also why tiering exists in a loyalty program, right? I'm going to take my valuable customers and nudge them up tiers. Uh, but at the base tier, again, I am reaching out to everybody and I'm doing that for a reason because I want to understand what the potential of every customer is. Uh, if, if you're talking about reaching out from a campaign perspective, yes, I'm selective there. But if you're talking about who wants to be a part of my program, with the business that we are in, we do want to capture as much information as possible. Okay. Is that different for you, uh, Vicky? Um, no, it's very much based on the brand experience, whether they've been in hotel with us, uh, in a restaurant, spa, whatever it might be. Also, on any of our own channels, um, we, we do acquisition through those. They're the two main uh, points of acquisition. So they've already, already had some sort of brand experience with us. And then also through some of our um, strategic partners as well. Okay. So has, has this customer behavior changed at all in the last few years? Or has the fact that customer behavior has changed changed your loyalty program and the way you approach it? Um, yes. Uh, the customer behavior has changed in the fact that I think their values have changed. Um, they're wanting to get better use out of their own time now. Um, there's much more value on that. And I think any loyalty solution in that, it's really that data exchange, the value for data exchange is what you're providing really with the loyalty platform. Uh, and, and being able to deliver a seamless, effortless, and personalized to the extent that you can experience for them, where it's, it fits them perfectly, and then they feel like they're not missing out on anything, and they're getting the most out of their time. I think that's where data can really leverage the experience, like the part that we see above the water level. That's very important, isn't it? Feeling like you're not missing out. I mean, though it is uh, emotional, say, aspect to 
uh, and otherwise, <laughs> yeah, financial program. So I want to talk a little bit about loyalty logic. And uh, I mean, I want both of you to take this question, but you can decide who goes first. How do you decide or design that loyalty logic, depending on the industry that you're in? Yeah, I can go. Sorry, yeah. Uh, and I, um, if I understand clearly, uh, you mean logic of the program, the commercial aspects of it, and uh, the earn and burn rules and what the program stands for. Yeah, the, the rules, how it works, what you don't want it to uh, well, be. Well, I mean, uh, any loyalty program has to have uh, two things. One, of course, uh, in, it should be engaging enough for the customer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other is your commercials as, uh, as a company. And why, uh, first and foremost, why does that program exist in the first place? Is it purely just to engage customers, or is there a commercial element to it? which I think most of the programs today should have or must have, uh, you know, where loyalty programs, are they sitting as cost functions or are they P&Ls on their own driving, driving actual commercial value? Now, uh, when you're looking at rewards and uh, per se, not really logic, but I would say what the earn, burn or reward values are, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's determined by a couple of factors. One, of course, is your margins. I mean, you, at the end of the day, uh, you need to be, uh, you need to forecast what your margins are on the products that you're selling uh, and build up on that. And again, at the same time, you need to also look at uh, the fact that today customers are very aware. So loyalty is earned, right? You're not, you, you can't buy loyalty. It's not, I'm going to give you 20% and you're going to be loyal to me. It doesn't work like that. Mm. And uh, in order to do that, uh, you need to A, educate customers, uh, have considerable value, but at least the perceived value must be great. Mm. And there are some, uh, many organizations that have done that really well. And then on the other hand, there are organizations who may be giving back a lot of value in terms of uh, the financial actual uh, worth of uh, the currency, but the perceived value may not be there. Mm. So it's, 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 a, it's a healthy mix of both, if you ask me. Uh, and uh, if, if you can get that right, I think that would be a good starting point uh, so that at least you're able to engage your customers well enough because today so there are too many programs. you're making it count for them, but you're also making it count for it the business. It has to count for both. For the it business. has to count right. for both. If it doesn't make sense for you, I mean, yeah, you, at the end of the day, you're a commercial entity, you're not running a charity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has to count for business. It has to be relevant for customers. And if there's a healthy balance, it should work. What do you think, Ram, about this yeah. approach? I think, you know, extending what uh, Surya will mention here, there are few objectives that any loyalty program would like to achieve, you know, uh, when we talk to customers. One is you want to deepen relationship. You want to leverage loyalty program to really deepen that relationship, right? You want to engage with the customers, drive engagement. You want to increase wallet share. You want to influence behaviors, right? And customers, depending on, um, you know, the nature of business, the product or categories that they serve, as well as the market, or the industry in which they operate, the maturity in that would determine, you know, how much they are leveraging this across, right? To what degree? Let me take an example. Uh, if based on the product and category served, if you are in grocery, you probably have more frequent interactions, engagement, sure. and the value probably is less, but they are more frequent. So you are really talking about customers. You are engaging with your brand. So your objectives there is, I want to increase my share of wallet. Right? I want to uh, influence their behaviors. Whereas if you look at a luxury brand, uh, it's more about you can't do points probably because you know, the customer is turning, you know, coming to you maybe once a year, right? Uh, so there it's more about how do you drive that exclusivity and experiences. It could be right? like an automobile. So it's less, yeah, it's hmm. less about you know, that value exchange that you have through points. It's more about how do you drive that experiences and exclusivity. So maybe you're bringing some lifestyle partners together. Mm. Maybe you're creating some interest groups so that you can make the brand top of mind. Right. So that logic typically varies based on that. And then the second aspect is the markets and the maturity, right? If you're a early stage company going direct to consumer, you're more focused on customer acquisition, right? Whereas an entrenched player in a, or in a very mature market, you're more towards engagement and using loyalty as a retention tool. And really, in travel and hospitality, you're looking at how can you drive additional revenue streams, leveraging loyalty, right? So that really varies from the market in which you serve and the categories that you serve. Okay, that's interesting. I want to know 
uh, which brings me to my next question is how do you measure the success of your loyalty program? So Vicky, if you could start with you first. Um, I think, again, I think that's the importance of those KPIs has switched more to customer engagement, uh, retention, repeat business, CSAT, MPS. I think those have become more important in measuring loyalty rather than, uh, I don't know, uh, redemption rates and everything else that we, that we typically have before. Whilst they're still important for the financials of the program, I think, and someone mentioned this this morning, get the experience right for the customer and the revenues you can see that the revenues do follow on. So I, I think it's become much more about the engagement piece um, okay. in terms of measuring the success now. Would you agree, Sanjeev, anything to add? Absolutely. So um, we have, so, so internally we have two types of metrics that we look at to evaluate our program. Uh, one is sort of internal to our team. Uh, so the larger metric, like she mentioned, is, is repeat revenue, right? So. Uh, we look at our contribution of the program to overall sales. And if you break that, break that down, there is acquisition, there is retention, and there is uh, the engagement bit. But something else that, at least as a team, we hold very close to our heart is uh, because we're a central function, we operate a little differently. So we, have, we have, so we have brands that reach out to us, and they're sort of our internal customers. Uh, so the more often a brand engage, engages with us to drive either promotions that we come up with or promotions that they need to reach out to their customer audience, the frequency of that is something that we hold close to heart. So what I mean by that is that the more they reach out to us, the happier we are because we know that we're doing something right, which is why they keep coming back to they us. They keep coming back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's interesting. I mean, if you look at, correct me if I'm wrong over here, but if you look at your loyalty program as uh, like the, the super CX version of everything that you're delivering, so is it a reflection then for the rest of the pool of whether you're doing things right, whether things are getting messed up, whether uh, parts of your journey have friction? Is it a way to collect more feedback or sort of um, experiment, I would say? Is it or, or does it survive purely by itself? Is it reflective, is what I mean, of um, how your journey is doing in general, because then you could convert more people to, say, your loyalty program. Is that for me? Yeah, <laughs> it could be for you. <laughs> uh, I mean, your customer journey and uh, what you do as a program and its linkage to the stickiness to your your program. And uh, I mean, loyalty. if I understood your question correctly, yeah. uh, and conversion to your loyalty program may be a metric to kind of understand how your program is doing, but. You know, as Vicky was saying, there are a couple of things that you would look at. You know, one of them, okay, let's say lifetime value. Because at the end of the day, if your customers are coming back to you and spending more, and there are some very old historical metrics, and I won't get into that about, you know, loyalty, which everybody knows, saying, okay, a loyal customer spends a lot more money with you. And of course, that, that does, that, uh, they, that they do. But having said that, if you have a seamless journey across your brand, uh, loyalty is just one element of it. Yeah. Right. I mean, loyalty is, you know, be it a hotel, be it an airline or be it, you know, fashion retail or in the oil business as well. At the end of the day, your customer is coming there for, for the product that he's coming in for. There is an experience associated with it. There is a ease of doing business that is associated with whatever you do. And loyalty is a very small element. So sometimes I think, you know, programs also kind of take ourselves very seriously. At the end of the day, you need to give a holistic experience, which is, which is delivered via multiple touch points. And if all of them are in place, and uh, loyalty is just one element, and of course that adds value, the customer would want to come back to you, uh, and uh, he and if he sees value in your program, of course, you know that. that I think it's also because everyone talks about it so closely with the retention, right? Which is such a big topic now. So uh, I guess for me that was the connection. But I would want from your experience, and this is for everyone one learning that you would want to share with everyone sitting over here. And that could be an advice that they could take, or it could just be a learning of what not to do also. I'm fine with that. So where do we start? Yeah, I think I can start. Um, so one of the um, misconceptions that I have seen is loyalty has got to be always points, right? Um, 
and there is a cost associated with it right and hence you know there is loyalty programs are expensive we don't know the ROI mm. I think we have seen you know customers who have really leveraged loyalty as an enterprise wise strategy and then made that central and got the results you know for example one of the retailers in the US who has you know um, whose goal was to really reduce discounting and leverage loyalty program as a sticky point so that the customers keep coming back and they were able to achieve good results so what turned, turned out to be a cost aspect really turned out to be more of you know in, improving your bottom line mm -hmm. so it really depends on like i said the categories that you serve and the market in which you operate that determines whether you have to always do points but we're also seeing that there is increased shift towards more experiential offerings because hmm. there are numerous studies which have shown that the increase in customer satisfaction with experiential offerings is a lot more than dividend based rewards right, right? so it, there there has to be a balance always so that's the you know the takeaway out of my conversations with a lot of customers makes sense <clears throat> perfect vicky um i think for me it's breaking down those silos um, and really making sure we've got such a rich pot of data and zero and first party data within a loyalty platform um, and it doesn't often doesn't it still sits in that silo so making sure that that's accessible and used across the business whether it's from helping customers through their booking journey, making sure that all of their pre-arrival details are looked after, that their check-in is seamless, we know when they're arriving, what they're expecting to do whilst they're with us, um, the, the seamless checkout, making sure that their travel arrangements are, are known, and, and then listening to that whole voice of customer afterwards and bringing, that, and bringing that back in. We've got so much rich data there, but typically in companies you'll see it sits in a, in a loyalty platform and isn't disseminated or used anywhere else. So it's really breaking down those barriers. And I think, yeah, you do know your customer. It's just that you have to make him realize that I know you and I'm acknowledging absolutely. that. Show me you know me. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Showing that you know that. <laughs> right. Uh, so maybe. Uh, one of the key things about uh, that I think we most loyalty program managers or heads of CRM struggle with, I think, is uh, uh, the actual value of a program and uh, working on that, especially with internal stakeholders, because there's this constant battle. And I've, at least, I mean, I've seen it within my experience, and I'm I'm, I'm not sure many uh, here in the audience have uh, had that as well, wherein um, it, it, there's always this conflict on saying what is the actual value this program brings mm -hmm. and why should I spend money on it, you know. And one is, you know, as Raju was saying, is it points necessarily does not uh, have, is, you know, uh, is something that we need to work with. But I'm generally saying, does the program actually add incremental business value? Mm. And you have, you'll, you'll probably see finance heads and, you know, uh, commercial heads, butting heads over this literally to understand that, no, no, you know, uh, it's very critical that as a CRM or a loyalty uh, practitioner, you're able to define this very, very clearly with your senior management or with at least the senior stakeholders so that you can define what dollar value this program brings on the table. Hmm. And be that as may, it may be in the terms of you know, lifetime value from a customer or in the form of incremental business hmm. or third party income from partnerships. But defining this is very critical. Otherwise, running a program and constantly yeah. you know, having to deal with this internally is a challenge I see many practitioners face all the time. I think that's a very fair point because if it's, you don't have a buy-in internally, then it's going to be diluted in terms of what it actually projects as or what pe consumers understand it as. But also, I think, to break it down to those individual KPIs, right? This is what I'm going to put in and this is what I'm going to get. And to sort of... Exactly. Yeah, commit. So your, your definition of success must right. be defined and not defined along the way. Yeah, but I think also individually, like you said, as opposed to only for the brand. Like I see right. the big picture, but I also need to see the small pictures to put in my extra effort. So yeah, that's a really great point. Sanjeev? Sure. So 
I think when we talk about a loyalty program, a lot of us tend to think of the loyalty program as, you know, a point earn and burn. So what you tend to do then is you tend to sort of take the program down to its lowest point, which is just a rewards program. Mm. When you're talking about loyalty, you basically our roles is to do absolutely everything that will take to drive loyalty. Now that could be like Vicky mentioned, you know, personalization, use data to drive personalization. Uh, it could be something as something like, you know, actually owning the CX function to ensure that if something goes wrong, you actually own that experience and drive that experience. Because a rewards program is the smallest part of what is actually going to drive loyalty. So that is something that I've learned over the last few years. Well, I've learned a lot through this panel. <laughs> Mostly, I think understanding loyalty mechanics to suit where consumers are already at, which is way beyond, like you said, the basics point program. All right. I want to thank my panel for taking the time to talk to us. And thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. Servir, Senji, Vicky, Ram, and Yolan. Thank you for that panel. That was very good. Appreciate you so much.